today when we're creating like our Gatsby site from a starter or like um, developing it or publishing it or building it, all those things will be pre-built into the CLI. So that's why we're going to, the first thing that we're going to do to get started is install the Gatsby CLI. So Jonan, if you don't mind, would you mind opening the terminal in VS Code? And I, I would love to do that. I was just thinking what I should probably do is um, open the terminal that will eventually become clear to me how to do that because I use Vim instead of VS Code, but I figured it out because there's a whole, all right, there's a drop down menu. For those watching at home who can't see the drop down menu because it's off screen, it's one of the menu items. It says terminal right on it and you click new terminal. And I have a terminal. Bam. Look at me. Great. Oh, my little prompt Looks is all great. messed up. I have a cool looking prompt font, but it's a patched oh. font and it's not here. Oh, that sucks. That's all so, right. <laughs> yeah. So the first thing you need to type in is npm space install. Oh, wait, I'll just type it into the chat. I feel like the people don't want to hear me spout random code. npm install dash g. Mm -hmm. The G stands for global. This means I'm installing a package globally on my computer that I can install anywhere instead of locally where I'd be installing it just into the application that I'm building in that moment. Is that true, Daniel? Did I state that succinctly? That was pretty succinct in my opinion. I'm a computer expert. It comes very naturally to me. That comes after 11 years of experience, y'all. It just took me 11, 11 years. years. Exactly. What is NPM? NPM, that's a great question, Shreya. So NPM is a package manager. So let's say I want to use Jonan's code, right? And I'm a lazy, lazy person. Like the only, like if Jonan puts his code on NPM, all I have to do is do what I just did, is just install it using the command. But if Jonan did not put it on NPM, then I would have to email him and be like, Jonan, give me your stuff. And like, you would have to email it to me. I'd have to install it manually. So it's a automatic way to um, install other people's code into your own directory so you can use it. And then the next thing we're going to do is using the Gatsby CLI, we're going to create our new site. So the CLI will just create all the configuration things for us. So we don't have to do any of that. So um, I'm literally following the tutorial that I posted earlier, a quick start of using the Gatsby CLI. So this would be great. But instead of the naming it Gatsby site, I'm going to name it Jonan's Bakery. Gatsby is a JavaScript framework that was designed for websites to get super fast. Because normally, like how most websites work um, that are not static, is that basically once you like type in, for example, www.danielkimsbakery.org, it will actually like query the server. And the server has to talk to the database and all these different sources to actually put together that website for you specifically. So that's why it took forever. So once you go to those pages that takes like five seconds to load, you know why. It's because it is trying to build it at the same time serving it to you, which takes forever. So what Gatsby does is it does all of the, wait, so what type of components would be changing? It was dynamic. So basically the components themselves do not change. What changes is the data source. So what Gatsby does is it pulls in different like sources of information through third-party API, like APIs. So the components don't change. It's hydrated by different types of data. I think Steven asked a follow-up about like if you want to make a dynamic site from an API, what would you use? So yeah, so today, if we have time, we're gonna get to it. If not, it's still gonna be the next stream. So basically what we're going to what you do is that Gatsby uses something called GraphQL to source their data. So like an example of what you could do is that you could use something called a headless CMS. So these are services like Contentful or a Strapi. There's like 25 dozen of them. I work for a company that makes one. It's called Forestry. And basically, you if you change the data in that other service, you can actually have it connected to your front-end code in Gatsby. So it's always synced up. So it's dynamic because you can change the like the, the content on your website through another service that plugs in through an API. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do, so this is really, really good if you want to do something called JSX, which is inserting HTML within your JavaScript stuff, is um, define your HTML stuff in a constant variable. So that's like very standard practice in Gatsby. So we can just do that right now. So it's const, name it whatever you want, equals 
So we're going to use the arrow function in ES6. So it's going to be, let's do like the parenthesis, like without just the regular parenthesis. No, no not curly. Just regular parentheses. And the, wait, could you like zoom in for the viewers? Because I don't think you can like see. I that. think you meant to say enhance. 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 I learned that from CSI. It's a programmer trick. Okay. And now I want to make this part smaller. How do I make the explorer go away? Da -da -da. How's that? Yeah, that's great. And then um, next to the parentheses, we want to do the equal sign and the greater than sign. So it's a shitty, uh, it's a it's a less good arrow. Like this. Yeah. It looks so derpy to me, but that's just me. And then let's open a curly brace. And then hit enter. We got to like put stuff inside those curly braces. Okay. And then we're going to return and then do a parenthesis and then enter because we want to stuff some stuff in the return. And then we're going to write some HTML. So let's rewrite the hello Jonah mode. Um, Why did it refresh? Oh, no. It should not work because you didn't export anything. So we need to do export default and loaf at the very end. It's error. You can tell it's, oh, oh that was it. OK. Oh, that's helpful. See? I like that message. See, yeah. you likely forgot to export your component from the file it's defined in. Or you might have mixed up default and named exports. So now I have to export. Yeah, so you do export default and then the name of the, the, the constant. The constant being loaf in this case. We have to wrap the H1 in a div or it will not work. Wow, really? The div yeah. is required. It's required. For those wondering what a div there. is, no one really knows. What you do is, if it doesn't work, wrap it in a div. Every like designer, front-end designer out there is just screaming at their screen right now. Divs are boxes. They're boxes on the web page. You can put things in divs to contain things. Go to the file system, and then we need to add a couple of pages. So Gatsby has this really neat thing where if you put a JavaScript file within the pages folder, under source, it will automatically turn it into a page. So let's say I wanted to make um, breadgun.org slash about or slash blog. I would just have to do about.js, exactly. And then if you're lazy like me, you can just copy and paste your index.js and just <laughs> and then just rename the constant. Copy, paste. So now we should probably like use the component we just created. So let's try importing the, which one did we just work on? The footer? The header. The header. Okay, cool. Let's try importing the header into the file. From? That's me. How do we do that? Yes, um, we this. So almost, almost, almost. Why are we importing it from Gatsby? We need the folder. In, Import it from the actual like local path. Oh. So be, I think it'd be like dot. No, 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 don't do that. Don't, no, 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 local, local, local. Relative, rel relative, relative. So it'd be relative dot, dot. Path. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Components, got it. Yeah. So the dot, dot, what is that even? Why do I have to do that? So dot, I think of it as a hop backwards because I am five. So every time you do a dot, it's basically going up a level in terms of like where you are in the folder map. So if I was in a folder and I wanted to go to my parent folder, the one in which I lie, then I would say dot, dot, slash and go up one. Yeah, exactly. Like this? Better. Yeah. And then, yeah, exactly. You got it. That's exactly the idea. It says module not found, cannot resolve components in. No, no, you need to, the file path is wrong. It's component slash um, header.js. Oh. But it's header. Don't put the JS. Oh, we don't ever put the JS because we just don't want to. Look, see, there's so many more boots now. A boot, a boot, a boot, a boot. A boot of the many things he does. Okay, here we go. You imported, created, and put your reusable component. And then, yeah, just repeat the same thing with the footer. But, like, we got to make it more interesting. So the footer got to uh, have something. I feel like boots are pretty interesting, but fine. Oh, and if I put spaces after them, Ooh, then... that might be better. Oh wait, but if I do it that way, will, it, will the blue underline be on the space? I think it will. Let's find out. Oh, that's not going to work. What I'm trying to do is create a little gap there, so I can have different boots. That's good enough for now. All right, so I'm going to copy this whole thing and I'm going to put it in the footer. 
Are we going to have the same weights in the footer? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's all boots anyway, all the way down. Boots on boots on boots on boots. Everybody loves a good boot pile. Here we go. Oh, no, no. You you got to put the name as the footer. Did I undo this? Did I already do this work and I'm redoing it? How about this? We'll put it down here with a footer. I did it. I did it. I'm copying all the things that Daniel already taught me because he's an excellent. All right. Got it. I am. Emojis should be wrapped in span. How come it worked before? No, so it still worked. It's a warning. So oh. basically, it's an, it's an accessibility problem. Accessibility. But if you see the error, is the footer is not defined. So you probably didn't import it correctly, which oh. you did not. Whoa, that was a real judgment. You did not. That was very judgy of you, but I'm doing it now. And so everybody <laughs> just calm down at home. You can stop smashing the dishes. It's going to be fine. Components slash footer made with real feet. Ta-da! We oh, my gosh. It. Can we also, like, do a little dance? Like, wow, it worked. Okay, cool. <laughs> I can do like the flossy, the, the Conan O'Brien thing where you, I don't know how to dance very well. My children don't let me dance. Here we go. I did this. It's saved. Look at that. A boot, a boot, a boot, a boot. Hello, bread friend. I think it's a pretty stylish looking webpage if I say so myself. It's pretty nice, not going to lie. But I think we should do something else because like, let's say, for example, this business is going to be amazing. And then I get 50,000 orders for my sourdough starter which is surprisingly terrible like it's really bad like you gotta just gotta try it sometime it's so bad Sh- john i will i will i will ship you some some i don't want to just eat the starter that's it, it probably doesn't taste very good you know you have to cook it oh that's what the, that's probably why. this is exactly why you should not be in charge of breadfriend.com it's a good thing that we're co-founders you don't ever want to be a solo founder people watching at home you need two perspectives how do I do this? <laughs> so basically now, this is an amazing website, but right now it's super annoying because you have to import the header, you have to import the footer, you have to like put it inside the divs. It's a lot of work. So instead what we're going to do is have a layout, which is a mind-blowing concept in that we just create one thing and then it's like a template and then we just shove every other page into that template. So we don't have to do any extra work to create pages. Doesn't that sound amazing? Okay. Yes. Was that why I, we didn't script this part, but if I had a layout, it would look like this. Mm-hmm. And then I could put my scribbles at the top for the links and my scribbles at the bottom. And then I just changed the middle part is what exactly. you're trying to explain. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to create our layout just within the component because it's another component. How does that sound? Okay, I have a components folder already. I'm basically a component expert by now, so I'm just going to make another file, and I'm going to call layout. it mm-hmm. layout. Layout.js, sorry, not layout.div. What am layout. I saying? Layout.div. Hey, all right, we did it. Oops. And with layout.div, we're going to get into some advanced advancement of advanced studies, okay? Because there's some advanced React that's going to go on here. So we're going to import React like normal. And then we're going to define a constant variable called layout. But we're going to pass in properties, which is super cool. So we import the stuff. Import the stuff. Yes, Kyle, you will be able to find our code on the internet. And also, you can find layouts and components online. I imagine these are things that you can just steal, right, mm-hmm. Daniel? Yeah. There are places to just get whole steal layouts. Them. Yeah. You, you, you need to cite your sources and then copy them from open source repos. But yeah, there's like Kyle... Oh, shoot. Um, I can't shoot. Shoot. Garsh. You, what Garsh. I meant by steal was steal like an artist, like the book. Yeah, you yeah. borrow and you steal like an artist and you innovate and you yes and the work and you grow upon it so that we as a society level up in general. Read the book, Steal Like an Artist. It's a good book, I'm told. So, yeah, there are some libraries like Taylor, CNSS, Bulma, Bulma. You have to tell me like actually what to type here though, because I forget what's happening often. Oh no! I remember I'm importing layout. From... No, 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 no! You're not importing. Any... You're in the layout. You're defining layout here. You can't import the file that you're in right now. You're Is importing like file section. If you import the layout into the layout, does it explode? Yes. That was really close. You almost wrecked my very expensive computer. You got to watch me closely. What do I type? 
So you type in import, capital React, and then from, and then you do, yeah, React. That's big. Oh, React. React. You import React from React. It's super dumb, I know. Um, and then um, you do, um, let's define a constant variable called layout. Const variable, a uh, const layout, sorry. Like, let's is make it, it this way? Is it, a, it is capital because it's a component, right? Yep. And then it's equals. And then the, no, no, you got to put the equals between the layout. Oh, in, wait, const layout. I forgot this equals. I need an equals yeah. here. Because exactly. this whole mess, this whole hot mess here, that means, hey, here's a function. Uh -huh. And so what I'm saying is const layout equals this whole function thing, an anonymous exactly. function. And it's then, anonymous because we didn't name it. Mm -hmm. And then let's return an empty div. I'm going to return an empty div in curly braces because that's what we do when we return things. No, the return should be in parentheses. Oh, man. <laughs> almost, almost. Almost good. All right. I divved and, oh, see, it does it. All right. Wow, that's amazing. And then let's import the component. So uh, under um, index.js, index.js, no. I'm in index.js. Oh, sorry. I am like blind. <laughs> I started watching the wrong It's really hard again. to see all the stuff here because we have a lot of. Wait, do you want to make the, 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 the ratio a lot more better? No, this is fine. It's good. I'll just keep closing the thing because we don't always need to have this open. It's useless information most of the time. I should just close it when we're not using it. Okay. Oh, and look, I can just go between my files up here. That's so much easier. I'll just yeah, that. That might be better. Yeah, like what we do now is that we just import layout. So let's delete the import header from whatever and footer from whatever. I feel like I need to stop saying these like from whatever. Like, <laughs> I don't know, bro. It's probably fine. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Right. Um, now. I did it right sure? that time. I'm pretty sure I did it right that time. No, and well, it's empty though. Oh no, you didn't export the thing at layout.js. Oh, did it tell us? It gave us not a very useful error this time. There's See? so many errors. That's kind of why I think there are a lot of errors. But you know what you can always do is just Google the errors. That's mostly what programmers do. Export default. Export. Am I exporting? Um, export default and then layout. Layout. Yes. Great. And then um, let's go back. So the point of the layout is that we don't have to type in import a header and footer for each one. So let's go back to index.js. Boom. And let's delete. Oh, you already deleted the header and footer. But I didn't, I'm still importing these here, which is maybe mm -hmm. why the page is still working at all. Somehow, I'm still ending up with a header and footer. Mm -hmm. Right? That is weird. It's because it I'm importing it in the layout, so the layout loads. You're the, no, you're not. I'm not. <sighs> Wait, can you reload the? Oh, that's why it's not. Oh, that makes sense. Because Gatsby showing error. Do you not see this? Oh, I see it now. I did reload, but then I think what it did that was actually a rare edge case we just witnessed where probably whatever hot reloading there is didn't reload all of the JavaScript stuff at the same time. And we managed mm -hmm. to reload the page. I'm fairly certain that we reloaded the page in one. That was a unicorn moment. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Let's do it some more. We'll go over to the layout thing. <laughs> and then let's copy and paste the, well, I think you deleted it already. So you might have to copy and paste it again. We need to um, import the header and footer into the layout. So you should do import header. In layout. Wait, yeah. And then I just, I wanted to do redo here. Command shift Z. Oh, I already used that for something else. I can't actually just do that here. I have to click it every time. This is slower than actually typing it, but now I feel like I'm committed. It's like when you, um, what do they call that? The gambler's fallacy? Something. All right. Here we go. Fallacy of something. Yeah. Okay, when you feel compo like you have to keep going because you've already done a thing that was really not very clever and you just kept going. I'm going back over to my other file now, to my layout.js file. Hi, Jenna. This is a delight. I agree. Pink Hat Jackson. That's a good name. That's a pretty good name. My Given that her name has nothing to do with Jackson. 
Maybe Pinkett Pink Jackson just really likes Michael Jackson. That's true. That's true. Import uh -huh. layout header header import no import header yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're confusing ourselves at this that was point. close that was really close no, um, there's only one dot we're already in the components folder so it's uh, dot slash and then header so there's only one dot that's a thing we've never explained to steven what does one dot mean it's just one folder above you no it's not slash component it's slash slash header bye steven bye steven take care Wait, no, it's, it's dot slash and then it's header because we're importing the header file. And for and those who come along later, dot slash means the directory I'm in. Use the directory I'm in, dot slash this directory, header. Mm -hmm. Ta-da, mm -hmm. we did it. And now I have to reload because I had an error. And it works. And I didn't even no. add my header yet. Yeah, yeah. And then we need to add the oh, footer as well. I have well you got to put it inside time. the dip though. I have to put it inside the div because everything must come in a div. I really mm -hmm. need to enable my Vim shortcut mode and turn off this thing where it auto closes tags for me. Cause that's, see, it's doing it. Oh, it's doing it twice because your cursor's in there with me. Oh, I think I'll just log off. I think no, I you can stay in here, stay in here. Cause you have to fix stuff. If we need, no. it could be an emergency. It. No, it's okay. You got this. And then let's do footer as well. I do it in one like that, or do I have to have the actual double thing? I think I no. Have you have to do it in one. You can do both. Doesn't matter. Really? It, the error is different. It doesn't have to do with this. Yeah. And then let's do footer as well. Okay, I did it. No, you got to import the footer. You are bossy. You have a lot of sass. Daniel's mother, if you're watching this, you raised a sassy young man, and I like it, actually. <laughs> footer. How about that? Um, save it, and then let's see where we're at. Rebuilding. Uh, I rebuild. Oh, that's, I see. Okay. But why doesn't it? Oh, it doesn't duplicate it because I deleted it from the other page. Did we already delete it over here? No, see? <gasps> Busted. It's in two places. That's so weird. Let's delete the header and the footer. Wait, how are we using the... That's so weird. Wait, can you go to... Oh, bro, it's failed. Wait, let's go back to index.js. Okay. And delete the header and the footer. Delete this. And it'll go away, huh? Uh-huh. Oh, no. Now it can't resolve components in users... Jonah oh, you didn't export it correctly. It's slash components slash layout. Slash layout, yeah. <laughs> this is very entertaining. The autocomplete stuff that VSCO does is not going awesome for me. Hey, it's oh, doing works. the expectedly wrong thing. Mostly in programming, you're trying to find it to break in the correct way. Oh, this okay. is correct. This is yeah, correct this because is you never used the layout. You didn't yeah. actually use it ever. Yeah. So let's replace div with layout and see what happens. Whoa, like right here, just like this? That's a thing? I can just do you it? You can try it. And then see if it I works. I have to do it down here too. No. <laughs> Space cat. That's how we celebrate. See? Flash. That's my my celebration dance. Have to go awesome. to bed for school. See you later, Bo. Get some rest. Yeah, bro. Uh, Kodak graphic. These teams are amazing. Yeah. They're really confusing. The pathing stuff is very confusing. But just to reiterate, if you're in a directory right here in components and you want to go up one and you're looking for a file that's in source, then mm -hmm. you would go dot, dot, I went up. And then if you mm -hmm. want to go down, you would just go components. So if you're in source and you want to get something that's in components, you would just type components slash. And if you're in components and you want to get something in source, you would go dot, dot, slash, and that would just be here. You wouldn't have to say dot, dot, slash source because dot, dot, slash itself is a shortcut way of saying go up one, dot dot slash is go up one, and dot dot slash again would take me to Jonan Loaf. And then oh, I go. Oh, we're going on next week, by the way, Coda Graphic. Coda oh, Graphic. We're, we're going over Gatsby Sharp and Gatsby Image next week. So oh. if you stick around next week. I thought that I was, you were explaining that I was explaining the directories and that was unnecessary. But can we spend oh, no, next no. week on directories? I just want to keep doing that thing I was just doing for the whole two and a half hour stream. Wow, that's a very long stream. Wow. It's going to be great. It's okay.
<laughs> and then, like, so, okay. But I w really want to display Hello Bread Friend, right? And we're not getting to display that. Why doesn't it show up? Yeah, because let's go back to layout and see what happens. So in layout, it literally just tells it to display the header and the footer. It ignores everything inside. So we have to use this React tool called Properties. But um, bum. Okay, ba -dum, to, bum, bum. This is this is so low budget, guys. That I have to add my own sound effect. It's amazing. So uh, if we want to put something in it. What we have to do is we have to pass in some properties. Woohoo! So if you want to pass in some properties into the layout thing, what we need to do is type in inside the uh, inside the inside the sorry, what am I saying? Inside the prop inside the parenthesis, we need to type in props. That's what we're importing. Props. And that's my right parentheses up here. Yeah. Exactly. And then um, between all right, just keep talking. I'm. Just, you don't have to. I don't know, mind I what's going like on. A, I think this needs like a moment of silence. Props That's it like, like it's hot. That's funny. <laughs> oh man, I'm good at jokes. Okay, here come the props. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, between header and footer, let's do a curly brace and then type in props dot children. Ooh, all of the children, and this is going to get all of the props children, children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's illegal to use children as props, like just to like make them stand on the set. Be like, you can't move. You're dead. I don't know, man. Wait, did we just do it? That yeah, was it. I did it. That's an advanced React that worked here. That doesn't make any sense. Should I explain what's going on here? Um, yeah, stand. Oh, great. Okay, cool. So, so everything inside. So when you wrap something with the layout, everything inside of it is considered like properties because you're basically passing in information to a particular component right so yeah basically by putting the thingies inside of the parentheses you're being like hey bro this component is complicated it's not defined by how it looks on the outside it might have something on the inside that makes it a special special component and then what you can do is you can use that like all the details that are like that the div is uh, that the that the Thing is, sorry. Uh, so the whatever the components are wrapping, right? The inside you can actually access that information through like accessing its children. If that makes sense. that makes literally no sense. No, I sorry, think yeah. what you're trying to say is that the props wrap the props with the props in them, and then there's children, and then you type children, and then did I get it? Yeah, I, don't think I understood it actually at, at all. Can I try one more time? Hit me again. Yeah. Um, sorry, I got I got to like figure out how to, like, I need to organize my thoughts. One second. That's okay. So how do I do this? Huh? How do you explain props.children? Props is coming in. I can see where, if this is a function, we talked about this being an anonymous function, insofar as I'm then passing a thing in, mm -hmm. that makes sense. It says it's a parameter. When you give a parameter to a function, it's like saying, here's the thing. But in this case, it's saying, hey, whatever you're handed, call it props right so i could call this dog if i wanted as long as i call it dog down here and then i have dog children like exactly creepy hybrid beasts but i could make this back into props again because we name it props just so people also know what we're talking about when i show this code to another programmer props is the properties props is short for properties it could just as easily be named properties all we're doing is telling this anonymous function hey here comes the thing that is properties, you can name it whatever you want. Later, you can check the properties to get all sorts of things on it. You can yeah, call so all the, kinds of stuff on it. Yeah, so I think the best way to explain children is that you need, it's basically the content within, so whatever's wrapping the, what is, what the component is wrapping is the children. And okay. the component itself is the properties, but you can, it can be literally named anything, but the conventional thing to name properties is properties. So that's why it says props.children. So you're basically telling them that this component is special when you like put props on, inside the parentheses. So I could call props the component. You could if you wanted to. But I wouldn't do that because it would be very confusing to people because props is what Gatsby <laughs> programmers call it. Yes, exactly. 
And the lesson here is just copy what already exists in the code. If you're using someone else's code, especially, and they named a thing, don't change the names arbitrarily. Just let their names stand. OK. So yeah, I think we got a question. What's the key difference between props and props slash children? So props, there's no difference, because you're basically getting the children of the prop. That makes sense. The prop is the parent. This is like React things. So the prop is the actual component, and the children is like the thing that is within that component. Like, for example, here, it would be the content, like, hello, bread friend. This thing that we're passing in here, it's a bucket of whatevers. And in there, you can have all kinds of things, and you can have children in there. And when we say children, that's like a magic word from React that actually mm -hmm. refers to whatever we put in the bucket. In the case of the layout, when we called layout back over here in index, we look, we put this stuff in the, in the layout. The stuff that we're talking about, it's this. So what we're talking about is the child elements, the elements that are inside of layout. So if I add other elements in here, those will be children of this thing. I suspect I could even do like parents, if that's a thing. Yeah, you that could. would be confusing in this case. But if I, um, there are other methods that I can call on the bucket, bucket o junk that I just passed into layout. So <laughs> anything between layout and layout, that's the bucket props. That's the thing that we put into here, and we can name it whatever we want. We can call it stuff I just did, stuff I sent, right? Stuff I sent. And then down here is stuff I sent. And in the stuff I sent, just find the children. Exactly. 